Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? How's everybody? I think we're good to go. Everything's looking good on my end. So welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Alex Lazarus. I am a creative director in Portland, Oregon. And I am excited to show you guys some tips and tricks for how I build things in Illustrator, especially logos and badges and design system stuff. So not really design system stuff today badges and logos. So I'm going to teach you guys kind of everything you need to know to like start your own little logo business or even just a side project that needs a logo. Oh yes, I have a cat shirt on. That's true. It's a thing. I'm actually surprised the eyes aren't, they're green, so I'm surprised that it's not picking up the background, but we're good. It's my, it's my little partner. We're going to be, <laughs> with chat and the cat, we're going to be off to a really good start today. So it's going to be good. Uh, I'm excited to work with you guys through this stuff. Today versus yesterday. Yesterday we did a bunch of little cool little things. Let's see here. Oops, wrong screen. There we go. We did a bunch of little fun little lockups. Today is going to be more about the journey than a final destination. I know you guys have probably seen me before on Adobe Live. Um, I've historically done um, like a lot of projects to get to the end to show you guys kind of all the whole process, whether it's these labels. Uh, or like Sorbo, but I'm going to show you guys kind of how I can quickly use all these Adobe tools in Illustrator to build a bunch of different logos really, really quickly. So you're not trying to flounder and try to get one uh, like perfect logo immediately. This is kind of the, the big, what does the journey look like kind of stream. So we're going to try to build out a bunch of different things. Uh, hello, Tim. Hello, Afra. Steven, Shauna, welcome, welcome. Sean. Valentina, good morning, good morning, good morning. If it's good evening, if you're on the other side of the world, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I need your help though, because I know we're starting to do a coffee brand. We can always pivot if you guys need help uh, with your own little business. We can kind of do a little quick take. Uh, we're going to riff as many logos as possible in this next hour and a half. So I need numbers from you guys. How many logos should we try to make? I don't know if we're gonna get them all, but it'd be kind of fun to see how many you think we can make in an hour and a half uh, doing different things for each. So uh, if you have any numbers, let's try. I'm thinking I wanna try to hit 12, maybe 14 if we can. Uh, but as always, it's what you guys wanna talk about. So if you need help with any like design advice, career advice, tool advice, client advice, whatever you guys need during the stream, just let me know, I'm happy to help. Uh, we're gonna have a good time together. Oh, besides this cat tea I have, I've also got the creative genius himself, Bob Ross, to help us today, which is gonna be a great metaphor for our stream. We don't make mistakes, we make happy accidents. All right, Tim, over 9,000. Okay, Shauna, 1 million. Oh my goodness, three. 19, 19's a lot. We could probably draw it. 1533 here, says Steven, mid late afternoon. Good, perfect. It's like perfect time. Maybe like take a little nap and then get back to making some logos. Happy little logos. <laughs> perfect. 2.30 a.m. New Zealand time. Man, you're up late. <laughs> Welcome, Steve. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning or late into your night, I guess. Bob Ross mug. It's a happy little cup. I know, I love love my coffee, gotta have it. Needed the inspiration, you know? All right, so first things first, oh, I'm like clicking around. First things first, let me just move this up real quick. There we go. Um, I always build my logos in black and white just so I don't get distracted with colors. I think it's a really easy thing to do is you get distracted with colors. Uh, perfect example would be like, if I wanted to, I could like riff on this logo here and maybe I want it to feel like a beach logo or something and got like this area here. Maybe there's a mountain. I'm gonna grab the polygon, actually a star tool. And I showed you guys this yesterday. Um, and I'm gonna just use the arrow key to adjust how many points that the star has. I'm gonna just bring it down to a triangle. And maybe I'm gonna throw it in here, make it feel kind of like a mountain range. So while this might be a fine logo, if I start trying to get all the, the colors and things like 
sorted immediately, you just spend time being like, okay, is this is this gonna be red? And I guess this might be water, so maybe this is blue. And then maybe this is the sun, so this goes yellow. And you're like, okay, no, it's fine, it works. But like, was this logo composition gonna work for you anyways? Um, so like, focus on the composition and creativity behind the logo. Not necessarily creativity, composition and execution and then start worrying about the colors because colors can distract from like the actual composition. Plus you have to think about if for your business or even your client's businesses, they're most likely gonna be printing this logo in black and white 99% of the time. Uh, color is expensive, color also doesn't print very well at your home printers and things. So just start with black and white and then you can do color variations later on. All right, Shauna says the inside just scoop would be a, such a, a cute ice cream truck name, get ice cream and a little ice cream gossip. Oh my goodness, that's good. Well, that would be that would be a great idea. <laughs> so put quarters in the logo machine and crank some out. There we go, put them in. <laughs> Start a little quarter vending machine. There's some tattoo shops that have those like dispensers and like do like get what you get days and you pay like a certain amount of money, like maybe 25 bucks and then you get a random tattoo and you have to take it. Some of them have like also been like, all right, you you can, <laughs> you pay a, a certain amount and you can roll again, essentially. All right, so we've got a bunch of different typefaces. Yesterday I started with just a couple. I ended up buying a bunch just quickly versus having to search for hours for free ones. Uh, so I apologize. This one reminds me of Wisdom Script. It's not Wisdom Script, but if you want something similar to play along at home, uh, get Wisdom Script from the Lost Type Co. I believe it's free for personal use with a donation option. And I think $30 for corporate or uh, client usage. So uh, it's very similar. But you always have options within Google Fonts and Typekit or Adobe Fonts uh, to be able to use those pro fonts as you need. Seen too many logos that look great in color, but then someone prints black and white photocopies. Yep, it's especially hard with uh, like gradients and things. Like really make sure that your logos translate well to black and white. Same tip for logos as it goes for your, your resumes. Um, your resumes need to be working in black and white. If they don't work in black and white, you are doing yourself a disservice because if you get the interview, the recruiter will probably print out your resume and if you have a full color project or whatever in that, it, it's not gonna look very good. So resumes need to be black and white. Hello, Eric, welcome, welcome. All right, anyways, so we're gonna crack into it. All right, so basic shape stuff that we're gonna start with just to give ourselves a baseline so that we can riff on these really, 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 really quickly. We're gonna start with rounded rectangle tool. Boom, pow. So we've started, we've got these, oh no, did I press caps lock? What's going on here? All right. Hello? Why is my... Okay, whatever, it's working now. All right, so you're gonna grab the corners of this and you're just gonna pull it down. Uh, oh no, they all go down. So how do you get rid of that? Make sure that it doesn't all just become like a wonky circle. Just grab these kind of, you're gonna grab, um, press shift click on the two corners that you don't want to be circles. And you're gonna pull them out so they're straight. And then the ones that you wanna be rounded, make this portal thing. Boom, pow. All right, so now I want it a little bit taller. I'm gonna pull these up. I feel like my illustrator is being wonky this morning. Let me see. Actually, I'm just gonna do a quick, quick, quick restart of my illustrator. Save it. I'll just crash it out. Not crash it out, close it out. Uh, So we'll do real quick. It's 
probably just completely my fault, but I just want to restart it. <laughs> I'm trying. Also, colored coded graphs and charts and documents. Yep, color code. Yeah, whenever you're doing print work or anything that might be printed, make sure that your um, color coded things will translate well. Make sure you print it out on black and white first to see how it'll look. What is going on? View. I am struggling to grab the direct, like the, uh, I'm on the uh, direct selection tool, but I can't grab those corners. I think I need to grab, change my view. Let's see here, actually just workspace, just layout, window range, workspace, go back to Essentials Classic. Oh no, it's probably my view. How did this happen? Sorry, chat. We're struggling here real quick. Hide corner widget. No, I don't want to hide corner widget. I want the corner widget. Oh, uh, no. Show corner widget. Tim, do you know why my like corners are hidden? I thought it was caps lock. It's not. I know you're a wizard. I'm trying to click these with my direct selection, but I can't see them. Is that shift, control? Okay. Whatever. Real world designer problems? Yeah, exactly. Shauna, do you understand why, why I can't see them? Alex, have you done the any coffee bag mockups in Dimension yet? No, I haven't. I've actually not worked on uh, like a co client coffee brand yet. Uh, I've been wanting to, but I haven't had the pleasure. Why? Uh, let me just pull this up. View. Do I have live corners enabled? How do I turn on live corners? Command Control H. Oh, I keep doing Command Shift. Uh huh. Command H. Absolute legend, Luis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's why. Okay, so what I was doing was I command shift H, but I didn't command shift H. And instead I pressed command H and then I lost all my, my corners. I know something silly like that. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you guys teach me something new every day. Great. All right, so now I got my angles, my corners back. Now I can do this really quickly. Legend. All right, I'm actually gonna just shorten this down really quickly. Probably something like this. Hmm. All right, so now I'm gonna grab these two corners, shift click, so that both of them are selected. I'm gonna pull them up. Now I got a little badge outline. I'm gonna actually just press shift X to change the stroke. Uh, and I'm gonna bump this up. Cool, cool. All right, so now we've got a little badge, kind of like a soccer, like a soccer um, badge maybe. All right, so we've got coffee break. Fits perfectly in there, it's actually really nice. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align it. I'm actually gonna press paragraph align middle, and then I'm going to shift click while having coffee break selected. And then I'm gonna click option click or alt click, and then center horizontal align tool at the top of your screen. Boom, pow. Now I've got this. I can, what else do I want to put in here? I can do like, we can do a type align tool real quickly. Uh, and say, 
type. We're going to change it to type on path. Oh, actually, what we can do is a vertical type tool and then do click that and then do donuts because everybody likes donuts. And then we can do free Wi-Fi. I don't know. <laughs> That's too long. Uh, donuts, cronuts. Uh, maybe not. Let's see. So we can try to do some vertical type. Maybe that's fine, maybe not. Just keep riffing on it, move this over. Uh, we can do like a quick little like established. Or we can throw in just some coffee if we want. Ba -do -ba -do. Cool, that doesn't have, I don't have wisdom script enabled. <laughs> Him. All right, let's not do that then. I was trying to riff and put some numbers in there. Well, let's see if we can do just like, uh, uh, I'll just grab like a coffee bean from this assortment. Maybe that feels okay. Maybe not. And then do like, let's do the type on path tool real quick and see if we can curve the type around this section. Mr. Bean comes to mind. Oh my goodness, Mr. Bean's amazing. Type on a path tool, okay. Hot, coffee, cold. And All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually grab the anchor and then we're gonna flip it. So you see that little like, that little line right here is kind of the angle of that, let me show it right here. This guy is what you're gonna click with the white arrow and then you're gonna pull it around so that you can see it flip so you can read it on the inside. Oh no. I'm going to double click. Why is it doing this? All right. I'm just going to move it around. If it would like to participate. Cool, let's get it balanced. Just work, just work the way I want you to work. I'm gonna grab it again, <laughs> move it over. Oh my gosh, work. <laughs> it's bullying me today. Just one of those days chatting, that's okay. There's no accidents, what is it? We don't make mistakes, we make happy accidents, it's fine. It's actually easier if I just like move everything else down to fit this. Cute little bean. It is a cute little bean. Simple is better. Hard pressed to quit. Oh my goodness. 
You guys are making coffee pun jokes. I love it. Big fan. <laughs> Come on. All right, grab the direct selection tool. There we go. Cool. I'm gonna move these guys out really quickly just so I can shorten it again. Kind of like it in squares, but I like everything kind of in squares, so. Let's see here, get this going center. Maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger again. All right, so we got one little guy here. Let's see what it looks like with rounders corners. I want it to feel kind of locked up together. And we're just gonna grab these two corners and bring them down closer to the coffee. And that's an option. We can also do this. Oh my goodness, brutal. Excellent coffee beans make for great human beings. <laughs> Those are my favorite. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna actually take this and do like a little square lockup at the top. And then I'm gonna take it by Command X, grab it, and then I'm gonna Command B or Control B behind it. And then I'm gonna change the color to be white. It's feeling a little bit better. And we can always grab like all the other assets. Let me see here. Open a new tab. So I've also got those illustrations from yesterday that we got from Adobe Stock, which can always help aid your creative process and give you some really good uh, objects to help you lock up a logo or a badge. Just pulling them up real quick. So these all look pretty good. Let's see here, let's keep riffing on this. So we got this direction, it's kind of one. All right, one out of 12 or 14 or 9,000 that we did. All right, let's see here, all right. So we got one, let's see what else we wanna do. Uh, we can do a reverse version of this. Where we have our type at the bottom. I could have this elongated. And then let's grab, let's see if we have anything that could work. I think this one might work. I think we tried to use it yesterday. It's a little thick. Let me see. It's kind of cool looking though. So if we do this, we're going to grab this background. Oh, just make sure you truly espresso yourself. What is it? What is chat's favorite coffee? Are you guys coffee drinkers or not coffee drinkers? I personally love having espresso and doing like a latte. Uh, probably the best purchase I've ever made in my life was getting a really nice espresso machine. But I know some people prefer tea. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to keep the the width of this uh, like the outline pretty similar to the magic bean one. We can always see there's a little bit of texture with this typeface. 
Uh, we can always roughen the, the edges of the badge to kind of help it feel a little bit more consistent. Oh, this pun's mocha me happy. Oh yeah, you like your, Shauna loves her soy, soy chai lattes. Okay, okay, okay. Drinking iced peppermint tea fresh from the garden. You're so fancy, Tim. So fancy. That's pretty incredible. All right, so we got this little guy. We can bring it up if we want. We can do hot coffee. Uh, let me see here. We could leverage this. This feels very coffee. I'm gonna do this lock up like this. We're gonna pull this in. Maybe it's too t too small. Uh, maybe this needs to just say coffee roasters. So it's a little bit more legible. Never want your type to be too too small in a logo lockup or a badge, because then you can have issues with readability as the logo gets smaller. Uh, we'll see. that there move that up a little bit and just we'll drop that down to the bottom line uh, we can always leverage the uh, we can try to shorten that that doesn't feel correct yet oh yeah Steve New Zealand coffee of hers incredible Stephen says, I like skinny hazelnut latte if I'm having coffee out at home I tend to either have black French press coffee all up saying such hang tea. Wow. Oh, wow. French press for me always just feels like it takes so long. I ain't got time for that. Uh, I kind of like how this is looking, but I need something. This isn't. I don't know yet. We're going to keep riffing on it really, really quickly. So I'll probably do a type on path tool again, just because this stuff typically feels like it could use that. Dark, rich, delicious. Uh, There's some coffee words. Ethically and organically. It's kind of a, a mouthful. But I guess in this in this instance, the type that's going around this arch is more about creating a visual cohesive thing rather than like actually it, this is like the ornament around it. I can see that being the argument. I don't know who designed that. That's weird. <laughs> uh, I crack myself up. All right, let's see if we can like place it inside of. Uh, What we're going to want to do is, I'll just grab this. And then I'm going to just bring it over. I'm going to get the corners to all be square so I can just crop it real quickly.
Cool. I, I like the contrast often between having a rounded shape and a square shape. Uh, but I think, let's see what it looks like just riffing on it super duper fast. Just to bring this circle. Uh, also feels nice. Uh, and then we can also leverage it again. Like This is kind of the fun part about doing these badges is you can just put them in different shapes or you can duplicate them. Uh, C, F. So I'm just Command C, Command Fing, which is paste on top or paste in front and paste. So it's copying and then pasting it in front. Words are so hard sometimes. All right, Control C, Control V. Nope, Control F. And then I'm going to just bring this square up. And that way, it's not locking the corner angles. That's why I'm keep. Uh, what's it called? I keep pasting it, and then just taking the the corners up to squares before I move it, because sometimes the corner angles can get messed up if you just pull it directly. And I'm trying to scale it down. And these two corners, shift, click. It's kind of fun. We can always do this too, where we uh, combine them together by doing a, make a compound path. So let me show you how to do this. All right, so we're just gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna option drag shift so it's in the same order. Uh, and now I'm going to do a clipping mask, or not a clipping mask, compound mask, compound path. And now it's outlined still, but I'm going to press Shift X and it's going to automatically pull it all in. And now it's one path. And then if I wanted to, I could make this thinner or outer. So you can mess with your shapes that way. But that thick outer border, so it's to look really nice with the thicker inner condensed type. Looks pretty boggly doggly, as the kids say on Twitch. All right, cool. So that's actually looking pretty nice there. I'm curious to see how what else we can do. So we got one. Nice little logo there. Uh, we can do a circle badge. I know we kind of struggled with it yesterday. This one actually started to turn out pretty good. I think I had to push it just a little bit further after the stream yesterday. This is kind of fine. Uh, let's see if we can do another circle badge. Kiepa. Kiepa. <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right, so we can do the type and path again. We can also do, I'm trying to think. All right, let's do some cursive stuff in here. V, because everybody likes cursive. The, and then we can do like, uh, let's see here, I got some fun little typefaces. I want to use, because they've got this like cool little like O. Um, excuse me. I wanted to use two O's in there if possible. So I'm going to bring this up. Did somebody say Kappa? <laughs> Dan, okay. we're just spitballing random Twitch words together. It's my favorite right now is Poggly Dogly. Get a little Pug Champ riff on there. All right, let's see here. We've got Coffee Shop. Maybe this doesn't feel right. Maybe it needs to be something like this where we start throwing in some type. Uh, how are you doing today, Kathleen? I know you love your coffee mugs. I've got my Bob Ross with us today. It's kind of, it's, my coffee is no longer hot, but it has like one of those heat activated, beautiful Bob Ross scenes. You guys are so fancy, I love it. All right, let's see here. 
2020. Let's start messing with, uh, throw in like a little coffee bean here maybe. Ba -doo -ba -doo. Because this has this little like, I'm gonna press M and just make the little marquee tool. Make my square, I'm just gonna copy that same kind of visual element throughout, but it's too long so I'm gonna actually just pull this over. Probably just actually just remove the establish the period. And I'm gonna bring this over. Ooh, Ohio State mug. Fancy fancy. What a happy little mug. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna bring this down, start to match the uh, same kind of visual width. That's fine there. But feel like what we're going to need for this to feel a little bit more cohesive now is to bring uh, a curved type into it. So I'm going to do a little uh, type on path tool. But actually I want to just lock this in a little bit more. I'm going to bump this up so that it matches this width. Uh, I'm going to actually pull this out just a tiny bit so it's not so close to the coffee shop. We've got a couple little details in here. I feel like it needs a little bit more, but let's we'll just riff. We will just riff. We can always do... I mean, what's important, aesthetics or quantity of what? Coffee? Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, aesthetics, obviously, obviously. I got some really, really cute glass mugs in the other day and I'm very excited to make like a, like a Irish coffee in it because it, the layers of separation are really good. <laughs> it's because aesthetics, Shauna. The layers within your coffee are important, just as the aesthetics are. Glass mugs, man. All right, let me type on path real quick. Uh. I love the genericness of the coffee shop being a name for a coffee shop. Uh, let me just move this over. Maybe this needs to be this typeface instead. Uh, let me just move this over. Demand picks when you make that last. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. Having great cups is like, it makes me so happy. <laughs> I love having like, there's like certain elements that I've acquired over the years that just make me so happy because they're so beautifully designed. I have a really gorgeous desk. Every time I see it, it just feels so good because the craftsmanship is just superb. It feels, I don't know, whenever you have all that attention to detail, it just feels really nice. 
All right, let's throw this around this guy. Maybe this needs to be and then hot coffee. That's not nearly as nice now. I like the, the coffee shop around in the corners of the circles. All right, let's see here. Just gonna align everything vertically and horizontally, but then also shrink this down. Just align it vertically. Uh, probably gonna actually just duplicate this. I'll just pull this over here and then go free Wi-Fi. And then I'm gonna pull this over. Cool. I'm actually going to align the type or outline the type here. And that way I can vertically outline it a little bit better. I'm going to probably actually just cheat the visuals on the coffee in here. Just so it feels like it takes up the space a little bit better. Maybe not. Maybe I need to say, like, your best friends. I don't know. What, do I, what should I put in there, guys? What do you think, chat? Can you use a mascot in this logo? Yeah, mascot would be great for this, but I don't want to spend that much time building mascots. We could do like, you know, coffee, like things. We could do uh, some of these illustrations we have, but just from a perspective of like time, doing a mascot wouldn't be the quickest. And I know we're trying to like, we're trying to get 14 logos by the end of the stream, which is gonna be fun. All right. Uh, Let me just turn this down. Oh, I like that there. What I'm going to do actually is to cheat. I'm going to just try to leverage this inside circle, maybe. Or maybe I want it to just be, I'm trying to like take up the space here. So I think I might just even fill it. Hmm. I like the Magic Bean logo with the type on the path, like the first round one. I like these guys. Yeah, it's nice. It feels better. But this is part of the process, right? A little struggle bus here and there is good for the soul. It makes you appreciate when things do go exactly how you want them to go. <laughs> Ooh, we could also do... That was an interesting Illustrator thing. Let's see here. So just kind of pull it in, pull it over, ba -da -boom, ba -da -boom. and then just do like a little bit another one. I'm actually gonna just 
make sure that these are all distributed correctly. All right. That's fine. It's whatever. It's fine. We can always do a like a riff on it where we use uh, are these all these fonts in Typekit? No, they're not. I purchased them from Creative Market, uh, but I just didn't want to spend the time trying to sort through uh, Typekit for distressed fonts when I can just buy some like vintage Typekits for like. Ten dollars. Um, let's try to do some coffee waves. Maybe this feels like an ocean. I just want one point in the middle and one point at the end. There we go. Uh, but you can absolutely use Typekit fonts and Google fonts to help your designs out. Don't feel discouraged by that. This actually has given me an idea though. So this coffee, me should have been type on path, I think, to fit that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make like a little, I'm gonna copy this guy over, this little squiggle. I'm gonna pull it down. I'm gonna make a little flag with it. And while this might not be like a good design element for what we're wanting right now, it could help you guys with any projects you're working on. So I got this. So that's like a nice little ribbon. I can also just pull these three. Sorry, Adobe fonts, the artist formerly known as Typekit. I always just stuck in my ways with that. <laughs> Adobe fonts, correct, not Typekit. All right, so if we wanted to, we can type on path here. Hot coffee. Just boop, boop, boom. So we got a little like little flag here, but what we can do is get even more witty with our flag. We just drop in a uh, little button in the middle, a little point, and then I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna pull up my pen tool, I'm gonna press Option and click to make a little flag here. Mia, I need to watch the first part of the stream. Did Alex go over the process of getting the expectations from the client or how to gather that information? Uh, Mia, no, I did not because we're just riffing today on um, just making logos and badges and stuff. This isn't actually for a client project or anything. This is just for like fun to kind of work through this together um, and just make things. So it wasn't like a, it's not like my typical process. Oops where I like to show kind of all of the strategy and stuff, but I'm happy to answer any questions around that that you might have. So we can do this little badge, and all I'm going to do is put this in here and then just delete these. Do you, Mia, do you have any exact questions about client expectations or managing that that you might have that I could help answer? So to make a little ribbon, I've got these two overlapping. What I'm going to do is even just whoop. 
can always see what it looks like with like a, a stroke on there. Kind of have some separation between the, all of them. <coughs> Not line struck to the outside though. It's a little, little thick. Your thoughts on logo builder websites? I mean, I think the value that you provide to a client is something that shouldn't be easily replicated by AI or uh, logo builder websites. I think they're great for somebody who needs that, I guess. I don't, I don't know what a logo builder website is. Is that where you go like, is that like a Fiverr or 99 designs or whatever? Where you just pay a little bit of money and get like a logo in return? So if that's the case, then like those have a place in the world. But if you mean like uh, just type in your logo or name and then you get a logo, you're gonna, I think the logo would look very similar to other people's. So then there's no brand value in that necessarily. But it depends on how you value your business. I think different price points and everything, you know. Mia says, I always wonder how to stay creative and meet everyone's vision. It's a process, I'm sure. Uh, so I would say that oftentimes the cool, creative, amazing logo that I'll do for, or brand stuff that I'll do for a client won't be the final version. Uh, so I have written in my contract that any of the iterations that I have done are mine to use and present how I like because I did do that work and that I own the rights to them even if it's not the final version. So present the ones that you like and put those in your portfolio. At the end of the day, if your client's not happy, then you're not gonna get new clients from them. So always take care of your clients, make sure they're happy, they feel good and that they feel satisfied with your work. Like a lot of times designers are like, this is my idea and it has to be this way. It's not the case. You provide a service and the service is great, but understand that leave the ego out the door and help solve the business needs of the client. That's my hot take on client services. smart clause to have yeah I mean I got you learn things over the time I wasn't always that smart when I started off I've had those clients where they say no like if you uh, if you're wanting to use our work like in your portfolio uh, you have to get explicit pr approval to present it and those always turn out to be the worst clients in my book. Because they get really uptight about the creative. But then again, like if it's just like, hey, while we're working together, uh, don't show work, that's obvious. Like, yeah, you're about to launch a project or a new rebrand. You don't want it to, you don't want the world to already know that you're doing a rebrand for them until they're ready to release it. It's a balance. It's always a conversation with everybody. If you're not having conversations with your clients, you're not going to be very successful in meeting their needs. Yeah, sorry, Em. I don't speak that language. As Tim says, how many variations do you present to a client? I present one direction to a client. Uh, but that's just my flow and that's how I work. Um, I do a lot and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of strategy before I do any design work for a client. So I like to, let me see here. Uh, so before I even design the logo or the design system or the brand solution, everything is kind of well thought out and the client knows the direction before I'm presenting it. 
essentially I get agreement before I start doing design work on the direction and the path and what success would look like for the logo. Um, so here's kind of like a little free little Wi-Fi thing. Maybe this is like helpful for somebody on the, like maybe they need this on a banner for their website. Or maybe they need it for uh, like a poster in the, in the store. Wix makes logos. Okay. <laughs> I think as soon as you're racing to outprice AI or other people, you're going to have a hard time like growing your business. So find the value that you provide as a service provider, right? Mine is strategy, research, understanding, empathy, communication, all the things that think about like the things that a client or you don't like about working with other people and then don't do those things. Like I hear a lot of clients go, oh, well, like I had to fire a designer because they didn't show up or they didn't communicate or they got mad that I gave them feedback or whatever. It's like, don't do those things. Act professional and you get treated as a professional. This is fine. I need to stop riffing on that. Okay, cool. so we've got a couple more minutes left. We've got like 30. So I want to show you guys kind of just another thing that's not even just these like lockups within shapes. I'll show you a couple of shape builder things. We can do this. Uh, I'll do shape building. But it says, Rachel says, how do you approach logo design for a small business who has very few requirements or doesn't know what they want? Uh, Rachel, that's a great question. I present to them a bunch of different directions strategy and like how to differentiate their business. Um, and typically that helps kind of narrow things down. Uh, I will present similar logos and mood boards and things like that that kind of narrow down the creative. That way you get a good understanding about here's the realm that I'm gonna design in versus being like, here's six different logos and all different styles. Like that is gonna burn you out. It's gonna burn them out. They don't know that why this is successful. Uh, what I would do is build a build a, a, a mood board that is narrow enough to be like, this is why this works for these businesses uh, so that they can see, oh, that makes sense. I understand now the logic behind these design decisions. Uh, so whenever I present just one logo, I've already defined the spectrum and the solution being successful within this. And then the rest of it's just kind of like stylistically, does that fit that goal? Uh, it's not just a logo that I present so I present like collateral and use cases and the design system around it. And that's why I only do one logo. It's because a logo is just a logo. Like I think we get so hung up on what a logo is. Logos can be incredible, don't get me wrong, but a logo is not the full brand experience. Uh, how do you treat type? What does the illustrations look like? What does the color palette look like? How do you communicate? Those are all very, very important questions to solve with your client. Instead of just saying, this logo is going to cost you 20 grand. It's like, no, like explain to them what you're providing instead of just a, a logo for that much money, you know? So just think about that. Uh, three, three is fine, but every time I presented multiple logos, I get clients saying, oh, well, I like elements of this one and this one, and then put them back together and do these things. And it's, that's not going to get you across the line. Like you're not going to get finished by doing that. You're going to keep riffing and iterating and you have to explain to them why uh, these logos didn't work. If I present one logo and then the client doesn't like it, I typically will just say, here, let's go and illustrate it together. I'll show you exactly why those, those changes that you wanted don't work in real time. Like I'll open up the curtain, I over communicate. Um, and that typically like gets me a lot of trust with my client because I'm not hiding anything. There's no secrets there's no magic i just know the tools and i know your business because i've done all the research so if i get to develop to ask a logo should i try to hook them up with the whole brand if they don't want a whole brand then you're probably adding in too much work uh so i don't know i would say no i think branding is great if you want to be a brand designer and you want to do full brand kits and design systems absolutely do that work because if you're still building a portfolio and you haven't gotten the trust yet to do the full design system stuff, 
do it. It's a little extra work. If you're passionate about it, just do it. And then you'll figure it out. Like you'll be very happy with the end result. And then in your clause on your contract, make sure that you are putting in, that you can show all your work in your portfolio. And then that will in turn get more people looking at your work and asking for more brand system stuff and brand stuff rather than just a logo. So like for like, like so like the Hudspa sisters, Hudspa girls, so great at building a bunch of different little lockups and different like brand kits. It's not just one logo oftentimes, it's different UK cases for a vertical logo, horizontal logo, rounded logos, all these things are great little like brand kits. Uh, and so you're not just like saying, here's one logo for the client. There's a bunch of things you can do. So uh, there's a bunch of different ways to to kind of get the work done and make the client happy. But let's say focus on client services first. Empathize and care and listen. You're not always the expert. Uh, so just come at it from a place of like understanding and empathy and you're gonna get along so much better with all your clients. Oh, basic shapes, all right, sorry, that was like a rant, but. I think those are really important. So we can do basic shapes really, really quickly. Here's a great example of, I'm going to just change the stroke, I'll build it up. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it over. Alberta says, also have no more than three iterations of the examples and what an iteration means, anything after you that you got to pay on. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely true. Uh, make sure you're explicit in your contracts and always make sure you have a contract. The moment you decide to not have a contract is the mo moment you are opening yourself up to doing free work. And even if you have a contract, sometimes clients won't pay and that's a pain. Uh, anyway, so. I'm gonna actually take this. So I've already outlined the stroke. What you can always do is you can always uh, object path and then outline stroke. And so that gives you a path. Whenever you're turning over projects, make sure you've outlined all your type and your objects so that there's no scalability issues. That was a good professional round. Good, I'm glad. I love giving those. <laughs> those are my favorite. Uh, so we got some stuff here, boom, boom, boom. So we can just do basic shape there. We can always do uh, another one. We can build it with just doing the combine tool. I don't know, it was lagging. All right. Oops. So what I'm gonna do here is just make a little bit of a press command Y so I can see everything outlined uh, and then I'm gonna pull it up I'm gonna align this to center and then I'm gonna align it here and then I'm going to do the same thing down below and then I'm gonna grab this command C command F and then I'm gonna just rotate it shift uh, option and I've got it there so what I'm gonna do here is actually um, Pull these together. So I'm going to grab all of them. And I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool and I'm going to do Unite. So now these are all together. So this is kind of like an interesting little lockup. You can do this now. It's like this. Uh, so you can start messing with things again, or you can do. If you wanted to, this could be like a flower logo even. You can put whatever you want in here. I'm just trying to riff really quickly on like show you guys some more tools. So these are just basic path building or shape building stuff. Um, what else can we do? Uh, outlining type. So when I did the Sorbo work, if you haven't seen that yet, uh, 
built this with Kathleen, I guess like two years ago now, or a year ago, two years ago? When was it? 2019, May. Uh, so a long time ago, a year ago. Uh, we used outline type tool. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to do this to start giving yourself some custom characters to work with, which will help you a lot. Uh, trailer, variable, cool. So I like the all caps version of this typeface, but the goal for this was just to like, uh, like have some fun little variable typefaces and we can customize it however we want. It was not two years, it was 2019. So one year, right? April? I don't know, it feels like two years. How <laughs> many years ago? It's been so long. It's been so long. All right, so we're gonna do hot coffee. Let's see here, magic bean maybe. Feels like tears. Time flies. And then we got bean. So here, like we're just gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just have some fun with this typeface. So you can do this with anything, whether it's, uh, you know, sans serif or, um, Cursive, it gives you a nice little bit of control. So I'm actually, I just outlined the stroke, so, or outlined the type. So what I did was just uh, control click and then create outlines. And now what I'm gonna do is just mess with things. I'm gonna ungroup it, command is shift G to ungroup everything in your layers. And then I'm gonna move things up. And just have some fun with these, these characters. And this will kind of give you like a good platform for you to like build your own custom type. So you can start with somebody else's typefaces if you want but you can just move things around here and there. Have a little bit of fun with it, because if you're not having fun, you might as well do something boring, like finances or something. Riffing on all this stuff should be like a lot of fun, and it should be good for like your mental. When you start getting those things that are clicking, whew. no, your subtitles were correct. I was exaggerating, I think. So these are fun like little ways you can come in here and just start double clicking and you can just mess with each little aspect of the letter form. But you can see it's like, oh, this is kind of fun. Like there's a little bit of like whimsy within the typeface itself. But maybe this needs to go up. So you can start just riffing with logos and typefaces like this and just have a lot of fun with it. Very, very quickly, just make a little lockup which is exciting. So that's one way of just building up your own little like logos, taking a typeface that you enjoy and then leaning into the, the characteristics about it that make it kind of interesting to you. Magic bean, all right, so the magic bean's there. All right, let's see, uh, Wi-Fi hot coffee. Let's do just like a little I still haven't made a circle logo that I like, so <laughs> let's nail one out really, really quickly. Uh, coffee shop. Maybe I'll do that here. Just rotate this around. Cool. And then I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to write hand company, company. I guess 
everybody likes the little hipstery elements. Alex, what is the f the name of the font with the underscore and the similar O? The guy is called Huscon Hand Regular. Uh, I think you can grab it on Creative Market for like fifteen dollars. I think, and it comes with some like like badge lockups and stuff. I don't remember the name of it. It's probably like vintage badge collection or something. Uh, company. Wee. Oh my goodness. I hate when I get so close to it being in the correct position and then it gets wonky. All right. So what I'm trying to do here is just expand the type to fit the outer circle. Ba boom. All right, what I want to do is find a nice ampersand. And I will grab this. Oh, that is actually a nice ampersand. So weird. We could always also, all right, let's see here. I think this is close in terms of width. Maybe I want it just a little bit bigger. It's starting to feel a little bit better. How a, legal, how a logo is legalized by a client. Why does Illustrator do that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Kathleen. I don't know. It hurts. Uh, I don't know your question, Valentina. I don't understand it. How a logo is legalized by a client. Yeah, if you could provide some context, I could uh, answer that probably a little bit better for you. All right, let's grab one of these beautiful little Adobe vector stocks that we got. We could leverage an actual color if we wanted to. Let's see. I'm going to go with a little brown. Make it Maybe I want it just to be like. Uh, this is a little busy, so I'm gonna actually just grab one of these less busy ones. The first Apple logo. Well, thank you. Yeah, I pretty much did the first Apple logo ever. Pretty, pretty famous. Uh, yeah, these like definitely uh, has its. There was definitely an era of this like cross hatching logo thing. Like we're seeing a comeback with like all the hipstery design stuff, but maybe maybe not so much anymore. Oh my goodness! I keep grabbing the wrong layer. Maybe I feel like this guy needs to be like opacity needs to be a multiplier or something. Turn it down. Sorry, I had to sneeze. So I'm not uh, thrilled with how this is looking with the uh, huge illustration in the background. I think it could work for other things, 
but I like the lockup itself. So I can just riff on it later. But so that's fine. Uh, what else do we want to do? We do like really quickly. We do. Uh, Bean water, uh, but woodcut stuff is cool. Uh, bean water, bean water, bean water. Let's do like a vertical type path real quick. Oh no, we're running out of time. But because we're running out of time, that means that you guys should absolutely stick around and hang out with Kathleen after this episode. You guys are gonna learn a lot from her. She's pretty dang cool. EST. So here, let's just do some like little logo type lockup stuff. Uh, established. I'm gonna do like a little. Or like, let's do this, TRD, and then MRK, and then do, the, we'll be playing with type, but in Photoshop, ooh, exciting. I am, I get so rusty with Photoshop so quickly because I spend so much time in Illustrator. It's kind of funny. The bean water, okay, we got like this guy. Maybe we need just a little like, Maybe not. Maybe that doesn't go there. Maybe we need like a, like a condensed little. Ooh, that could be good. Uh, roasting company. Bean drippings. What type is the bean water? Bean water is Huskon regular, hand regular. So <laughs> everybody seems to be really into this guy. Uh, I think you can you find it on uh, Creative Market. It has some nice really whimsy stuff. There's also like a was it Huskon? Yeah. And then there's like a texture version stamp. So if we wanted to, we could do something fun like this, where you got like a nice little texture. The whole goal that I was grabbing all this stuff was the, uh, I wanted to have a textured type that could kind of match with these illustrations just really, really quickly. So yeah, these are kind of like fun. Uh, feels nice. The uh, the cursive starts to feel really nice with it too. Maybe it needs to be like, because the the whimsy from the T goes well with the the curvature of the, the T's throughout both of them. So you start seeing how they play off of each other. Uh, so we got that guy. We can always riff on it and make it in a rectangle as well. We've got only five minutes left. Oh no. Let's just throw it behind. Maybe this needs to actually, let's see here. Uh, let's get everything centered to this. Any favorite places to source fonts? Uh, you work for them.com has some pretty good stuff. Um, and then 
myfonts.com, I typically try to pick up the the ones that are on sale that I like. I have a hard time spending, there's so much money you could spend on typefaces. And it's tough whenever you're like, will the client pay for this? You don't really know initially. So, and sometimes you want to just try them out. So I try to grab them on sale if I think I might use them for a project, even if it's personal or not. Uh, just so I can. All right, let's see here. Bump this up a tiny bit to feel like it's a little bit more cohesive. We can also include with our beautiful corner tool that we learned yesterday, if you just cycle through with pressing option and then clicking, I know, option, clicking, and then you can pull them in. It's pretty exciting. Thanks to Kathleen for finding out that hot tip yesterday. So that's kind of nice. We can always also do like a couple of like additional elements if we really wanted to later, where we like leverage these kind of sort circular design elements. And then just throw it over. Not perfect, but it's kind of interesting. So just to get a little bit more whimsy. Uh, what was the first one you said again? Uh, youworkforthem.com. Workforthem.com is the website. Uh, they have some like bundles and stuff typically. It's a little bit easier to navigate than like Creative Market. Creative Market's pretty good. Uh, but anyway, so we riffed a bunch. I don't think we hit our 14 goal. I mean, I guess if you count each one as a individual, you can see, but remember, do everything in black and white first before you start adding color. Uh, leverage your free type tools everywhere. Outlines, great. Use contracts. Make sure you can show your work in your portfolios. Uh, work hard, practice your craft. Provide a good service to clients. Uh, and that's pretty much I think the tips for today. <laughs> but if you have any questions throughout the process or if you need a critique or anything, just hit me up on Behance. Uh, I will be here, Alex Lazarus. Behance.net slash Alex Lazarus. DM me any of your questions. I'm happy to provide critiques. Just have a little patience. Things get crazy busy sometimes, but I'm always getting back to people with answers to the questions. So anyways, uh, schedule. Up next is Kathleen. Uh, after that, Aaron, Andrew Hawkrattle. Shanti, uh, Andre, Alice, and Voodoo Val. You have an action-packed day today. So make sure you stick around. I know you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with all everybody. Kathleen's gonna be teaching you guys type in Photoshop, so don't miss out. Uh, come hang out with everybody else. Tell them to say hello. Um, but have a fantastic rest of your day. Enjoy your coffee, no matter how you like to drink it. And we'll see you guys later.